I want to call the meeting to order of the Sunnyvale 4A Development Corporation Board of Directors regular meeting Wednesday, May 8th at 5 p.m. All members are present and we do have a quorum. Public forum. Seeing no one here to speak in the public forum, I'm going to open and close that and move on to discussion action items. Item number one, discuss and consider and act upon the regular meeting minutes for March 20th, 2019. <clears throat> Anybody see anything on the minutes that look good? I'll make a motion to approve. Huh? Second. <clears throat> I have a motion from Mr. Bokniak and a second from Mr. Weeks to approve the regular meeting minutes from March 20th, 2019. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Move on to item number two. Discuss and consider and act upon the March 2019 financial reporting and related items. Good evening. Hello, Phyllis. Hi. As of, let me just say first so that uh, we're going to be going over the March uh, 31st, 2019 financials since we did not meet last month. Because of the timing of your meeting this month, uh, we weren't able to get uh, the April financials prepared uh, and get them out to y'all before y'all had a chance to meet. So we will actually next month go over April and May. Sounds good. Uh, as of March 31st, 2019, we've had year-to-date revenues of $268,819.27. The year-to-date expenses are $83,399.61. The sales tax received year-to-date <coughs> is $205,519.06. That is two months accrual and four months actual. Interest earned year to date is $8,533.44 and our state total $54,766.70. Our estimated expenses included our routine payroll. We had some legal fees, some subscription renewals, uh, membership dues to the Southern Economic Development Council, and we had some related um, expenses for the Main Street America Conference and a few uh, office supplies. So as of March 31st, 2019, you will have a total fund balance of $2,515,872. We currently show the assigned fund balances still the barn at Long Creek at 54000 and Hope Development at 187500 uh, leaving you an unassigned fund balance of $2,274,372. And the reason for that is the mid-year um, Budget adjustments that were made won't be reflected until you see your April financials simply because town council didn't approve the mid-year adjustments until their April uh, meeting. I had, <coughs> I'm sorry. I had a question on the, <coughs> the legal expenses. <coughs> I was looking at the actual financials. I may be missing something, but <clears throat> is there legal in another category other than legal services under capital outlays? In other words, I'm just seeing $22 in legal for the month and $294 year to date. And I'm just thinking, I know we've had some. Uh, some of those incentive agreements written up, and I'm not sure how, how we get hit with the legal bill or if it's somewhere else. Or. No, the, the uh, amount of expenses that are showing in that line item, which I believe is 91-691-6751, is your total legal expenses that we paid as of uh, March the 31st, 2019. And Paul, I know we talked about this when we were looking at next year's budget, and we went back and even looked at what 4B's legal fees were, and they weren't maybe 500 bucks more than what y'all's were. And I utilized them more for 4B than I do for A, so I expect theirs to be a little higher, but I mean, there wasn't that much of a difference. So I guess my question is, 
Well, we I guess we can get to that when it comes to the budget for next year. Until we got resolution on what those actually were this year, it was going to be a question of what was going to be in next year's budget for legal because we didn't have a good answer for what we had this year. This this is good as of March the 31st. However, uh, and, and I, I don't remember exactly if we had any for the month of April because you are running a month behind on your financials. Okay. Uh, there could be some additional expenses. <clears throat> But uh, normally when they do come through, you know, they're, they're, they have been small. You know, maybe $100, maybe $75. This last one we paid this month was $22.50. I'm not used to cheap legal fees, <laughs> so you'll have to excuse me. Oh, thank you. Okay. I had no other questions. Anybody else have questions on it? <clears throat> look like standard revenue for us and standard budget expenses. So I would make a motion that we approve the March financials as presented. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Bachniak and a second for Mr. Cash to approve the March 2019 financials as reported. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. We'll move on to item number three. Discuss, consider, and act upon the 2018-2019 mid-year budget. Okay, there we go. I think Tracy met with um, President Shatter and Treasurer uh, Bogniak. If I'm saying that correctly. Yes, you ma are. Um, <laughs> okay, I wasn't able to attend this meeting that she had with you all, but she does have listed there uh, the items that you all went through and made recommendations for changes oh this is mid-year budget oh i'm sorry i'm sorry this is the mid-year budget i have skipped ahead to the next one item, to the next <laughs> item for the mid-year uh we had met we had discussed what the mid-year changes were and they were going to be uh we had originally approved 500 dollars increase in dues and subscriptions to cover the main street america uh addition uh, 3000 to miscellaneous expenses for Sunnyvale Day at the Capitol, and we uh, increased our incentive budget uh, to $500,000 by adding an additional $375,000. Uh, we also made an adjustment uh, in interest earned uh, that was uh, current year annualized, and we made an increase into sales tax receipts. Uh, once we discussed the EDC budgets with the Budget Committee, and before they were presented to town council, uh, there was discussion in removing these uh, smaller items like the $500 for dues and subscriptions and the $3,000 to uh, for Sunnyvale Day at the Capitol. And instead of increasing the line items for these charges, since they were, uh, you know, overall insignificant, you know, felt like we could absorb those costs in a different line item. Uh, within the uh, 4A budget. So you all had originally approved the budget with all of these changes in it, and so now we're looking for you to approve it, the mid-year budget, without, with the only changes being the sales tax uh, increase, the interest increase, and the increase to incentives. So was, <clears throat> just, just to clarify a little bit, we talked about, and Phyllis made the point that <clears throat> we were Accruing more revenue than we had budgeted, so she bumped that up for the balance of the year for interest and taxes. <clears throat> we we basically put a number in for incentives that we have several months to go for the year. We've got several on the docket that we don't know, and it's more of a <clears throat> have the number out there if we need it, and you know adjust going into next year. You know, so we don't have specific projects identified yet, but we know that we've got a lot of folks coming to us for that. So that was the reason that incentive line was changed, just to let you know. No no specific projects. Just <clears throat> see. Oh, I just said just Sounds overall. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. From a procedural standpoint, what's the difference in having it budgeted for an incentive or just taking on an incentive as an action item? What what Procedurally, how is that different? Does it have to be then reapproved by the town council if it's not in the budget? And if it's in the budget, then it 
just slides through because it's already approved or Honestly, is there a different with procedure? Procedural with incentives, it's not really going to do anything. We're just holding a line item for it. No matter what with incentives, we still have to come before the boards for approval. Still have that's to what, go to that's council what I thought. So it's, it's it's just a, a just paperwork the, item. Is yeah, the auditing it. purposes and how they want to see things done and um, just being able to put something in there so we're not allocating it for something else. So it, it's a projection based on year-to-year -year use. Correct, okay. yes, sir. All right. But it really doesn't change the approval process. No, sir. Okay. Okay, so we need to approve the mid-year budget as updated or something like With that? With changes. With changes. I'll make a motion that we <clears throat> approve the mid-year budget update as presented for 2018-19. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Bokniak and a second from Mr. Weeks to approve the mid-year budget as presented with changes. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Move on to item number four. Discuss and consider and act upon the 2019-2020 budget. Okay, this is the one that I was not able to get. <laughs> so, I'm going to let Tracy, since I was not there, I'm going to let Tracy kind of go over these um, these changes that were discussed, and, and, and then just to say that, uh, you know, now's the time um, as, as you look at it and go through it, if there's any other recommendations for changes. Uh, this is for the 1920 uh, fiscal budget. Uh, now would be the time for us to go ahead and, and talk about them and, and see about adding them if, if or taking some out for next year. Paul, do you want, as a treasurer, do you want to go through what we discussed? Sure. Or? I, I don't know if you're all looking at it. I don't know what page. I think it's is. page 22. Thank you. <clears throat> um, you can kind of see the approved budget for this year in the columns. You see actual through March. You see the mid-year adjustments. So now we have the amended budget for 2018-19. And then we've got the proposed 19 and 20. Now, <clears throat> the top section won't change until future analysis done by the town. So we don't we don't touch that at this point. They kind of make those calculations and we'll adjust revenues for next year as, as they kind of see it coming in. The, um, <clears throat> we didn't change the departmental expenses uh, yet uh, for that. I, I'm trying to remember, oh, we do have the administrative assistant going in there. We, and we had that in this year too that we just never used it i guess okay. correct all right um <clears throat> there may be <clears throat> is it correct to say that we could have some adjustments to that based on the actions the town takes on salaries and things going through the balance of that's correct this year that's okay correct. so that that will that will be modified as they go through the review process what what about so ten thousand is all that Administrative assistance going to make for the whole year? It's our half. Right? Well, that's your that's half, our half. So, okay, so B also has 10000 within okay, that. So, it's 20 is what they're going to make. Okay. <clears throat> now, what did change is I think there was a question about promotion uh, because, you know, we spent 8000 this year and there's what, uh, I guess, six months still left on the, on the budget for this year of actual yet to come in. <clears throat> We had a much bigger number that last year. We kind of wanted to take it maybe to a little more realistic level where we really think we're going to be spending on some of this stuff. So we we kind of pulled that back to you know give us some you know some leeway elsewhere if we need it, and just just as an indication that we don't we don't want to budget for things we don't have solid evidence for. And I think we've been running under well under that for a while, and so we we put in a number that Tracy felt comfortable with going going with. Um, we had uh, general office supplies, which was going to include uh, new iPads for folks if, if they end up doing that, plus some uh, equipment and things for the assistant if necessary that comes in. So we, we put some extra money in there to make that 3000 <clears throat> The others were not modified a whole lot down below. Uh, the bond bridge payment is a calculated amount. Uh, we left training. We left... Um, our luncheons in place. We did increase the transfers out because that number hasn't 
changed in a few years, and that's transfers out to the town for our share of things like audit and, and shared expenses. Well, that hasn't changed, and so we're, you know, anticipating that those numbers may may change since they haven't in a while. So we're budgeting a little extra in there for for those items, the reimbursement, <clears throat> and then the the, the question is going to be of which we you guys may have much better clue to the future than I do, but we don't know what these incentives and these expenses are gonna be. So what we did was, we know the sign project in itself between soft costs and possibly acquiring little pieces of land to put signs on this, and the signs are not gonna be expensive, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But we have money in there this year that we had talked about maybe trying to you know get that project rolling it's on our agenda to get that moving and at least maybe getting some design costs and whatever else done out of this year's budget and then take the balance for next year uh, what that total comes out to uh, we're not sure yet we'll have a good discussion about that when, <laughs> when these sign estimates come out um, the uh, the gateway let's see that's oh that's the signage um, Infrastructure develop improvements. That did say Highway 80 infrastructure. We're kind of changing the name on that because we don't know where that's going to be and what we're going to be expected to do, particularly with this project that's going on out here. Um, it could be, you know, roads in the industrial park that's popped up and things like that. So who knows? We just wanted to take out that specific reference to. Uh, Highway 80 infrastructure and leave it a little more wide open and, and we put 150 in there and then we kept the um, uh, incentives in there at 500 as we did as we had this year again you know kind of a shot in the dark who knows what's going to come who's going to come next year I can't even tell who's going to come in three months from now but we wanted to have a placeholder for that I suspect and I think we all know that a fair chunk of these line items, these three line items, which is the bulk of our budget, <clears throat> those will not all be spent in the 2018-19 budget year. So what we have sitting out there for this year, that 700, is, is we're not going to spend actually spend that much. So we're going to be basically starting with a newer slate next year. I hopefully we can make some of the expenditures this <laughs> year though to get moving, especially on the signage project. So. I was hoping that we could get a little more granular on what we think those projects are going to be. You know, anytime I've, I submit a budget, I'd love to have myself, i love to have rationale for why I'm asking for it and something solid to go with. So I would like to try to firm that up a little bit if possible, just to say, you know, where, where we can to say, here's what we really think that's going to be. I don't know what, what your feedback is, Tracy or Phyllis on that, but. <clears throat> I are you talking about for the incentives, the infrastructure, and the signage? Primarily those I think three. So too, and I, I think if we could provide a better, you know, uh, maybe not a better, but a, uh, maybe a more detailed description in that uh, line item, you know, that would, you know, probably give council and yourselves, you know, a better idea as to exactly what you're going to be spending that. Money. I think on the incentives, we can leave the incentives alone because we did a thorough feedback of that and everything during mid-year budget so I mean they are expecting that to kind of fall in line and not have any changes I would think on that line item for next year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then but for the infrastructure and for that one particularly the amount that we have for this year and next year we kind of put around the cost of the Aston Road so the soft costs incurring this year and then whatever else out of next year's and then whatever I mean that covers the full 250 that's budgeted this year as well as 100 this year 150 for next year so I mean if we paid for that then that would essentially come out of that and drop that to zero yeah um, and the decision on that is going to be made prior to us resubmitting a budget again well and I'm gonna ask that um, you're just looking at this one tonight no action to be taken because I know there are going to be several other items that the budget committee are, is looking at um, for example they're talking about an idea of like an IT cost budget item added to our um, 
added to our budget for we've got to upgrade the servers and stuff so taking some of that um, and the EDC department paying for a portion of that um, as well as some other training and some software costs that are being looked at right now so there'll be changes made um, we do however have to adopt ours in June so that we can get that because we have to have our 60 days prior to the fiscal year beginning so we have, we as a group have to adopt so we'll, we'll have to adopt our proposed budget for next year at the next meeting yes okay so I, I guess my question is is maybe maybe twofold Phillips when we <clears throat> under the new accounting going forward for these projects once we agree to the incentive that incentive doll those dollars will hit the p l when that, when that happens they will hit only as they're dispersed so and, and that's see that to me is where we've got some timing issues here that not only we have to determine who's be you know how much we think we're paying out and really when it's going to be paid out so for example you know there's a good pro there's a strong possibility that the funds committed for next door are going to be completed and dispersed this year mm -hmm. right i mean they're gonna they're open to finish that project and get a co and get rolling so what we know of the incentives for this year are are that one which that was a pretty good size, I guess. But you see, my point is, if if it's not if it's not recognized until it's paid, it's identifying the project and determining when it's going to be paid to kind of drive our support for the numbers we're going for. Does that make sense? Well, we can. If you would like to keep a, so as we approve them, Phyllis will keep a spreadsheet of what we have and what. <laughs> The payout can be, we can have a date that we think that it'll potentially be paid out based on what the agreement says. Because in the agreement, it talks about within 30 days of CO or something like that. So we can kind of backtrack a little bit and figure out, oh, well, it may be around this time frame that it will be paid out. So if you'd like for me to kind of get that data together so that it shows when it'll get paid out, we can do that. Well, even, <clears throat> even just... The prediction for each fiscal year is good enough for me i mean is it going to be paid out this year or next year and as we're approving some of these let me ask you a question we have we have one approved incentive sitting out there right now that would be paid this year so far correct correct and that one will not come out of the incentives if you remember that one is a separate line item it's actually an assigned fund okay so. that's right those two were of which one's going to come back out that's correct Okay, so really, you know, we've got half a million sitting in there for, for money that's not going to come out this year, you know. I'm, I'm just trying to get a better grip on that and throw a better number out there to the council and everybody else to say, okay, here's where that's coming from. Here's the time, you know, the actual timing of what we think it's going to be. And anything we can do to clarify that by June would be great with me. Even if we could say, okay, we expect to have even if it was something going into next year where we say we expect to have, you know, maybe one $200,000 project and maybe, you know, if so we can even. On that, council does have that information on why we even increased it the way we did, because I took all the ones that I know that are coming down the pipeline, I put dollar figures to what I'm expecting them to ask for, and that's how I came up with what to increase this, <clears throat> this mid-year. And that's great, but we're not, we're not we're likely not paying those out though right probably not this year um in several instances but it's just one that i know for a fact i mean as you'll see we have the agreements here tonight there will be a couple of them that are paid out this year okay um two out of the four i know for sure will be paid out this year actually probably three of them so no there may be just about all of them that could potentially be paid out this year okay well, then it's it's going to be a question of coming up with the next year's number based on what's going to carry forward, what we think will carry forward from this year plus new. And, and again, I, I know we can't predict what's coming in the door in January for next year or whatever, but, you know, having that number is good. And if, 
if that if that number is good for next year, it's fine. I understand <coughs> that. I just, just just the more we can clarify, the happier I would be. So when we look at this sheet that we got in front of us, and the revenue says, hey, for the year, five hundred one and some change, and our expense is at nine twenty one. Right. So we're predicting we're going to spend more than we're generating in. So we're trying to prove right, that process. Right to say, now, you're showing that if this were to be your final, you would be going <coughs> into your fund balance four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So this four twenty would go into the. You, you would actually decrease your fund balance. Your fund balance is um, like we earlier. Two uh, yeah, two, mm -hmm. two point two, oh, two, two, yeah. two. Okay. two, two point two million dollars. So you would be that. Four hundred and twenty thousand dollars would be subtracted from that. Exactly. That makes more That's sense correct. because I'm like, how do you, how yeah. do you, how do you get that guy all? <laughs> I mean, even I can understand how we're gonna say we're gonna, we're making this much, we're gonna lose this much. It's like a four hundred whatever, four hundred twenty some gap. Oh, that makes sense. But it's coming from another bucket, another budget balance. I see. This this board, I think, has been accumulating funds for a while. Okay. It's spent some, but it's been mostly accumulating. I. I think I, I don't go back very far with the board. Yeah, we're well, hoarders. We've, we're we've, hoarders. Well, <laughs> now we've we've actually tried tried to in several different oh, yeah. cases. Yeah, you and, know, and, and, we and had we, we had some possible grocery stores, and there were there was some money that we you know had intended on paying out. It just didn't come to fruition. But the, we get the new budget fiscal year is October first, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, I mean, we're looking at. By the time we approve the budget in June, we only have three months left, 18, 19. So it's, it's, yes. it's highly unlikely that anything that's not already in the pipeline is but, going to. Yeah. But um, we get a control somewhat when we pay out, when we say we're going to pay out on which period? Or is that? Yeah, it's tied into the, the, the agreement. agreement. The agreement. And that's the CO, CO that you were talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. So our CO is within a 30 day window. I bet they don't. They're not ready by October first. I don't think we're going to be spending that money yet. For next door, at least half of it will be because part of it was after the infrastructure was um, put in and they submitted a receipt. So I okay. have that payment reimbursement right now. That was the detention pond portion. Mm -hmm. What did you say, Paul? The retention facade retention. grant program is detention. The what now? The facade grant program. We had talked about member signage <coughs> oh, all around town. That's we, what it's called. It's one of our action items we're trying to get done, actually. So the facade grant program would be. It's not something that Sunnyvale mm. currently has. It would be something that we would create. What essentially it is. So if you take, and I hate. If you take a building and it doesn't look good and you want to be able to incentivize them for like a 50-50 match on being able to kind of redo the front of their building, the facade of it, to make it look better, Correct. Um, then it could be a matching program that is created. Um, and essentially through the incentive policy, we can then go into creating that program. Yeah, that's my mistake. It's not included in the, sign, the signage. The signage column or, or row is specific for signage. This was se separate from that. This is more for like elevation. Okay. Yeah, there, there's a lot of EVCs that do that 50-50 facade matching yeah. grant. So yeah. if somebody does want to do something like she said to uh, increase their appearance, even if they want to do some landscaping possibly, it would be a matching grant where they would pay half. And it's kind of like what they did over here down on town in that shopping center area. What's that? Buildings mm -hmm. around that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Just like that, exactly. They look a lot better, don't they? Much better. <laughs> Much better. And then this would also be the time that if there's any other projects that y'all think that y'all would be interested in looking at and doing, um, one that's also been brought up is the possibility that Clay Road needs to be um, redone at some point. Um, when that some point is, you know, maybe in the next couple years or so. Um, but working on essential we'll have some costs on what that would cost to be able to do that um, that could be something you know another industrial park project um, so I mean things like that if you can think about or other things that you see that y'all would like to accomplish next year uh, <laughs> sorry I'm sorry 
I know what you want, Cable. Mm -hmm. For next year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Which is something we don't have in here. Um, you know, the idea of anything with, and not to say that it would happen next year, but if, like, downtown, um, if we needed to hire somebody to do a master plan for us, or um, I don't know all that would be entailed within the next year right now, but that could be a possibility of needing something. Would, so would that, if we don't have it in a budget item, would it fall under, like, incentives? It depends on what it is. Yeah. Um, but say if we did, you know, infrastructure. Well, I guess the, we got infrastructure there too, though. So if that's it, could be under that if it's infrastructure for the downtown. So like a consulting type of line item. Yeah. That was whatever we agreed on. For like like she said, like water, sewer, you know, that kind of thing, streets. Yeah, that's a good. That that's we a, would contribute. Yeah, that's a good idea. Toward the goal. I mean, that's a missing item. That's so missing yeah, item. so that, but that's a good point that you make, James. So. Um, so we're not even. Year. I mean. We don't have any money under like. Um, as far as next year's budget, what are we doing now? We're just talking about it. We have to approve it next month. <laughs> we have to. Preliminary. Right. Nineteen twenty. Preliminary budget approved to go to council, is my understanding. Yeah. It may not. It may, we, we may be too soon on all that anyway. Yeah, but we'll, we'll have to, at our meeting in June, we'll have to approve our 1920 budget because then that gives council a couple of months to, to approve everybody's budget. You know. <clears throat> but we, yeah, you can always amend the budget, or it might, be, right. a, it might be a mid year change or something, too. Yeah. Well, I, Five hundred thousand is more than we've ever spent. Like yeah, I was I don't anticipate anything going on over there. Yeah. 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 And okay. we do have the hundred in signing and beautification, and then we have facade down below. So it's like beautification facade in two separate areas. I'm I'm hoping by the June meeting we'll have an answer on the road, which is where that hundred this year and hundred fifty next year is just. A you know, kind of a little bit of a placeholder and we can talk about this. Um, anyway, we should be able to get a little bit of clarity, but I think we do have a big enough bucket for next year that we'll be able to do things like that. One of the things that we can do, you know, you're, you're talking about the facade grant and the beautification. What we can do is on that incentive line item, just take out facade grant program and stick that up in the town beautification. Yeah. Definitely. I like that better, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I, personally, incentives to me are separate from beautification projects and, and some of the others. You know, at least maybe move it up. That's, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what the facade is, is beautification. Yeah, it's whatever you folks We say move it to what? Move it two levels up. Just the take the facade grant program part and move it up to where it says beautification, because that's kind of what that is. is and then the, then the question is, then the more y'all talk about it, just to ask the question is, would that not be more of a four B? Because you're talking about beautifications. Well, I think a lot of it's going to be coming from commercial businesses, or all of it, and you know that I think that gives us a tie into that to that project, at least from my own perspective. But that's just my opinion. And also with 4A, whenever, so 4B also looks at beautification um, as far as quality of life and parks, but when 4A was originally talking about beautification, it was how do we create the industrial area and beautify that area as an entryway into Sunnyvale. Um, so it was talking about more of the primary industries that 4A focuses on as opposed to 4B. Makes sense. I guess my question is if you move that <clears throat> facade grant program to the top, up a couple of slots. Mm -hmm. How much money needs to go with that? Yeah, and how much needs to stay Great in incentives? Great minds think alike. Phyllis was just asking that same question. Yeah. <laughs> and how much stays in incentives, I agree. Um, and my answer to her was that beautification would still be fine, seeing how we really hadn't spent anything in that, and incentives would still be the same because I based what that dollar amount in incentives was just on incentives, not even taking into consideration the facade grant. So, <clears throat> theoretically, the hundred that's sitting in signage and facades could be light for next year. 
unless it we could be, unless, but unless I can get some of it out this year because we still have 100 in there. And if we do that and we see that we are making um, headway on that item, then we can always adjust it at mid year next year. Okay. There's one item that I'm looking at where it says other miscellaneous expense for um, business lunches, board dinners, etc. We're already over, aren't we? What so we this year it's got the uh, Sunnyvale Day at the Capitol Is within it? that line item. Oh, okay. And so we're going to be over because we weren't budgeting for that. Right. And that's something we probably won't do next year. We'll probably just do it on legislative session years. Yes. More than likely. Okay. Great. So we don't need to approve anything tonight. We're just discussion. Correct. Okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a, a, you can act upon it if you would like to act upon it, but I would recommend just with some of the outstanding questions um, to just hold off until next month. Don't you think? Okay. That's what our treasurer thinks, so we'll get with that. And both of you think that, so. <laughs> <laughs> the work in progress. All right, so we ready? are we ready to move on? Just good with that? Okay. So I need, I need to move to item number six. Um, and then we'll go back to five. Discuss, consider, and act upon funding the reconstruction of South Aston Road not to exceed 250K. And there was a separate email you sent for that, didn't you? I did. Um, I sent it to y'all's mm -hmm. iPad, so hopefully you received it. Please let me know if not. Aston I have Road a couple of pronouns. So she said it today about four o'clock. It says Aston Road presentation. So essentially I went out there and I took some pictures so those that haven't driven down it could kind of get a visual as you're driving down it. Um, if you kind of remember when we met in March, it was briefly brought up about the idea of for a possibly funding for South Aston Road to be reconstructed. Um, and the question came up of why why the 4A if there was a portion of the 4A funds that got taken for the street maintenance tax and in looking at things a little bit further and yes the street funds get the same amount of taxes as the 4A does however those funds are utilized yearly so their funds aren't accumulating like ours are and right now, I mean, just Jobson, Nance Road, East Fork Roads are ones that are being taken out of the street funds. When T.C. Lupton got asphalt, <coughs> um, that was something that was taken out of the funds. We have Collins Road Phase 1, Collins Road Phase 2 that will potentially be taken out of the street funds. Anytime we partner with Dallas County, then we don't pay for the labor that Dallas County provides. However, we have to still pay for all the materials and stuff. So the street fund gets utilized on a regular basis and essentially could be brought down to zero at the end of the year. There's not a lot of funds within that um, department as we speak right now. Um, so the idea of this one coming up being a dollar amount that is up to $250,000. So the thought is that it, the essential cost is going to be about $214,734 plus a 10% contingency, which brings it up to about 236,000. So I just said, you know, worst case scenario, um, as we all know, funds and prices change depending on when the project starts. So if you wanted to fund Aston, and this would be just the south side of Aston. So if you look on your spreadsheet, the south side of Aston goes from Clay Road down the first arrow, second arrow, to the end of the third arrow. Um, that is South Aston. Then, and so the pictures follow that line. I'm turning down uh, from Clay, going down, and then once this fourth arrow hits, you're hitting North Aston. This road is so crazy. Here's Aston, here's North Aston, here's South Aston. Okay. So. Um, it, it looks like with your pictures, there's been some work done on North Aston. There on North Aston, there was a, uh, it was just a couple of patches that had been done. Um, Notice that. But in talking with the street department, uh, 
they feel like the only one that really needs to be done is South Aston. And with South Aston also being home to Morley Moss, who recently expanded, um, I just think it would be a good project for the 4A to take on to be able to redo that road to help with the, the base of commercial development that goes on there. Um, Is this concrete or asphalt? Concrete. So we're reconcreting the whole South Aston road. Correct. And didn't didn't the town take three quarters of our? No, it's kind of a half. They half. took a half, half of y'all okay, for roads. Yeah. So can you explain? I mean. The reasoning i mean i know this is an industrial park but um because we gave up half of our money to roads then now we're asking to be paying for a road so the i mean the gist behind it is the town street fund goes for all streets all roads all anything that needs to be fixed within the town um, as a whole and here we have a project that is in the industrial area be kind of similar to paying for the sewer the water line that we did in the industrial park um, and so taking our funds that we can put something towards when we are so stretched thin right now with all the major road projects we have going around the town it really makes sense for the 4a to step up on this one and be able to fund it and just to give you an idea as to what has been collected that one quarter that has been going into the road the street uh, maintenance and what the general fund has actually paid out since that started we have collected since since it was approved and we began uh, taking that one quarter percent we have collected a little over a million four but the town has paid a little over three million dollars Oh, in roads since that time so you can see that that leaves about a million almost a million eight that the general fund has shortfall sort of yeah. has picked up <clears throat> so I, really, I like the idea of, it oh, comes down to the tax burden being shifted from arguably from property taxes to sales tax say that again I'm sorry Kimball. with respect to this particular well I mean not just this road construction or reconstruction but other and other roads that we contribute or, or we we reallocate the monies for the, the the burden shifts from property owners to sales tax but this wouldn't be the first time we've injected sales tax into to those type of costs I mean we're we're <laughs> giving incentives now for infrastructure that would normally be a town Expense. I'm so not sure. I'm not. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just making a statement. Yes, <clears throat> this would. So, if you're referring to like the CIP project list, I mean, this is on the CIP list. However, out of all the projects that are on that list, this one's not even falling on the radar of ones that would be funded. Um, so, if this doesn't get funded by 4A, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to be done for anytime soon no yeah <laughs> is this uh, <clears throat> is this the worst road in that area yes sir it's a good question how many miles are we talking about that are being repaired uh it's not even miles it's um 587 feet by 25 feet by 10 inches a tenth of a mile so it's, say, a com it's a complete, <laughs> so it's a complete removal of the road yes. and and re-pouring Okay. That's my understanding. Gosh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> First quarter of a million. That's what I'm wondering. The dollar, dollar number. Concrete town down to the street line costs fifty thousand. Plus, it has to be uh, <laughs> extra strong. Not sure, right? The road side has to be strong because it's street concrete. <laughs> so yeah, and then the, the track that's going to go on it is mostly like these yeah, eighteen wheelers and yeah. construction stuff. So, are we putting two hundred fifty based on what we what's failed before? Sure. Or are we putting two hundred fifty for? Things that are going to be better, like the reinforcements, the pins that we're talking about. I mean, it's just 250, but it's going to have to be up to the standards that are set for engineering, for concrete, for streets. For for and that's this person right here that's yeah. doing that. Or the public works director. So uh, most likely, there's yeah, there's engineering set standards. Standards. So the access, the, so the folks that are really using this road is. Um, uh, 
commercial tenants in the industrial park. Yeah, yeah, how many folks are right there? I can see my, um, more than lots. Yeah, so you have a plumbing, if you're looking just south of South Aston, there's a plumbing company. Um, it essentially is a vacant lot, but they use it for storage. Morley Moss, um, where that open piece of land is, that's where Morley Moss was expanded to. Then um, you have, drawing a blank there, and then at the very back end, you have J. Rawl Trucking, you have ONC Services, in that very front building between South and North Aston, there are about four businesses within that building. And then all along the buildings, just to the north side of North Aston, they're all full of industrial people as well, mm -hmm. companies. So, I mean, Aston is a pretty packed little industrial section we have. Um, now, who drives south, who drives north? I don't really know the answer to that, but if you've ever driven into that area, especially on the south side where Morley Moss is, they're parking on the road, they're parking everywhere because the lack of parking back there for as much as everybody's expanding is non-existent. They probably come in one way and go out the other way a lot too. No. That's a good possibility too. I am not sure of their traffic patterns once they get in there. Um, the I know there. from Clay, if you're going north, mm -hmm. North on Clay, West on Clay, whatever the straight from Syene is, um, from Syene to 352, your first inclination is just take a right in your first entrance, which is the South Aspen. That, is that where the sign is? The industrial park sign? That no, has all so the, the industrial park sign is um, past Acura. It's further down um, the very bottom of this page kind of right here. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so it's not considered the industrial park necessarily. Entrance, industrial park entrance. Yeah, yeah that's further south. Okay. This would require council approval? Correct. Any, any discussion? What do you, I think it's a, a good thing. Um, a lot of businesses in the industrial park, a lot of them expanding. I don't even really know who utilizes the road. I mean... Yeah. How long have these folks been in the area? For over five, ten years or more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's time. been there. More. 20 well, plus years? Yeah. 20 plus years, 20 these companies. Plus, I would think, yeah. Well, the, business, the, the park has. The park has, but I'm talking about the companies mm -hmm. themselves. And no doubt they generate a lot of tax revenue for the town, so we have to be mindful of that. I think a lot of them have been around for a while. I know Acro Systems has. Mm. Morley Moss has been there for a long time. ONC has probably been there only for the last Yeah, they're probably the newest. Two or three years. Yeah, I would but say they're the newest. J Roll Check uh, Trucking's been there for well, multiple years. They were there when Pam Mundo was here. So, so at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. So that's when they kind of first, because I remember going and visiting them when they first came. So if Most of them are pretty established within just that road. And that's good to know because then that also says, hey, this is a good partnership that we mm -hmm. could look at as well. So yeah. That reminds me of another point. one on the, sorry, K. Paul, um, okay. budgeting for, um, so another request that will come up is, um, to ask about uh, Planters Road to help resurface planters. At some point in time, several years ago, looking into it, Dow Kyle was um, told that we would fix Planters Road for them, um, and they're kind of asking when that's coming. You know, it's already been fixed once since I've been on the board. Yeah, I, so it's, supposedly we need to it wasn't fix it supposed better. to be a short-term fix. It was supposed to be the long-term fix, but it was just a putting uh, a Band-Aid on it at that point in yes. time. So now the reconsideration <laughs> of what that will cost to re redo. Yeah. That's I'm just saying, making a point. You know, if we are end up doing that, we need to do it the right way this mm -hmm. time. Sorry, that was nothing to do with this one. But So they're working on a bond, aren't they putting together a bond program or a bond of some kind to, to do road improvements? Or? So the committee 
there was a CIP project list that staff put together based on all the needs that are seen from the town. Those are anywhere from drainage issues um, on several areas of town, road construction, sewer construction. Um, you've got Collins Phase 1, you've got uh, our Phase 2 engineering, Collins Phase 2. You have a rec center, a community center, uh, rails to trails, um, all these quality of life things, a new library, new fire station, and so what they did is after we put the list together, we kind of ranked them internally, and then they put together a citizen CIP committee, and that committee has been meeting every couple of weeks, and they're tasked with kind of, they went through a whole training on what financial, um, like if you did a $20 million bond, how would that affect taxes? Um, and so they are going through a process right now to where they're kind of kind of determine what they think that bond number should be and then ranking all the projects. There's probably 50 projects on that project list. I know it was like $100 million worth of projects that are on that list. Um, and say you only fund 10 to 20 million of that and there's a lot of projects that are not going to get looked at. Um, and so they're going through a ranking system right now. Uh, and you can show you kind of in the administration, they've got all the stuff tacked on the walls. And if y'all want to see that when we go back for executive session, I think it's still on the walls um, and kind of what that process has been and what that looks like. Um, but this is not one that will be on the radar at all. There's so many other major projects that need to get funded. If our budget were tighter, I would have more of a philosophical issue with us taking this task on versus the town but because we have the ability to do something like this I would support it <clears throat> okay. do you want to support it with a motion you ready? <laughs> everybody ready <laughs> yeah. everybody ready <laughs> okay I'll make a motion that we approve the Aston Road construction project as presented for an amount not to exceed $250,000 Second. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Cash and a second from Mr. Cora to approve the funding for South Aston Road not to exceed two hundred fifty thousand dollars. All in favor? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Fun's just starting. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's not raining out anymore. <clears throat> okay, so we'll move on to item number five. Discuss, or back, or just item number five, I guess. Discuss, consider, and act upon economic incentive guidelines. And we should have a copy of that. Let me go back to my other email. See how that crazy I look. I wish to move forward. <laughs> you already went back to the other one. Okay. Guys, I am. I'm sorry, I have been, you kind of see my notes on it, I've printed it out, I'm marking it all up, um, trying to get this in. I had two documents that um, I was comfortable with, um, but they were two separate documents, and I had one of the board members offer to help kind of put these and combine them together, and that was great. I'm so glad they did that. But now it's, it, I'm confused as to what's in there and what's not. And um, so I'm going back through. I'm reading it uh, and making sure we have everything that we need in there. Uh, pages one through and sim simplifying this a little bit more so that it's not 16 pages long. Um, but if you'll look at page 15 and 16. These are things that are not currently kind of in the written section that I'm really trying to pull together. Uh, and what what I, I've always been told it doesn't really matter about jobs in Sunnyvale. And we've got to have some sort of job creation numbers, whether that be one job or a hundred jobs. And what y'all's comfort level is as far as a minimum for a job creation number. Uh, and that's going to range differently for an industrial business versus a retailer. We've got, I guess the ones we've kind of looked at are 
none of them have really been a lot of jobs. I mean, if you compare, and like it says in here, it's a case by case basis. So you're looking at lineage that was a 40 to, actually it's almost closer now to a $60 million investment and they created 25 jobs maybe. So, but the side of that one was it was completely robotics and it was great for the town of Sunnyvale. So, I mean, it made sense. Um, then you have some of our smaller retailers that are coming in that don't really have full-time positions. It's more just part-time wait staff. Um, so where, I mean, is it, how much do you really care about job creation? Um, as opposed to something else that may be the capital investment, the sales tax numbers. Um, and I just want to get a little bit of feedback on that. With our tax abatements, we already have an ordinance that says what our tax abatements are laid out to be. So that's within the document. I took uh, the requirements from the ordinance and put those in the document. So that's already within the document. Chapter 380 agreements. So back to tax abatements. Sure. Who makes that call? Do we recommend or throw it out there to the council and then they decide as part of a potential incentive package for somebody or, or is that done strictly at a council level? So it wouldn't go if you, if the tax abatement was done, it's typically done, it's approved only by council. However, it usually initiates through the EDC and it's okay. taken to council through that way. So it's usually facilitated through the EDC. The okay. same thing with chapter 380 agreements, facilitated through the EDC, I'm working on one right now. Um, but that chapter 380s are more for the town, I and mean, that's town approval. We do performance agreements, they do chapter 380s. Um, so we do cash, huh? <laughs> or re what is cash now? <laughs> reimbursement of cash. Um, you don't do tax abatements because you don't do anything with the property taxes, right? Um, but you could essentially do a sales tax reimbursement like we're looking at for one of the companies, okay? So you so primary jobs, um, I see that 100 there and I'm thinking that maybe you should be 10. Because like you said, I don't think yeah. a lot of the new businesses that are coming or that have come recently haven't had that many new jobs. But Look on I the, think any amount of new jobs is great. On the back side of that, the, um, page 16, is another way you can do it with job creation. This one's saying like minimum of 25 full-time jobs and then depending on you can do a percentage based on the average county wage unfortunately Dallas County's wage is about it's over 62,000 now so unless our industrial people are not going to come in paying 62,000 for their labor force factory workers um, so if you want to look at something like that and how that percentage pays out I mean, that's getting all too down in the weeds with y'all. I mean, I'm fully prepared to put that together if you wanted some sort of um, where y'all stand with jobs and where you would like your capital investment or sales tax to be. I know we've talked about with the projects that we've looked at that y'all would like to see an ROI in under five years, um, preferably three years for retail. It's obviously longer for tax abatements. They could go up to 10 years. And then if you add the targets, that we're looking at then those would weigh a little differently and so we had talked about doing a point ranking system kind of like how the tax abatements has points based on what criteria they're meeting and doing that <coughs> with the location if they're on Beltline if they're on Collins if they're at our four corners you know taking those and ranking them accordingly and then number of jobs the sales tax that they're creating property taxes and capital investment so when you're referring to the direct incentives, that's what we do most, that, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when I look through each of these, for example, you're saying, let's go back and look at each of these because like minimum capital investment. I mean, we're, we're doing things for investments of, I guess you could say less than 100,000, for example, on you know, a coffee company or, you know, um, the barn was that capital investment was well our lowest capital investment right now that we've entertained has been about two hundred and fifty six thousand. 
Even right. for that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my point is with the 15 main in there, if, it, if you really got the practicality of it, not much. 250 or 200 or? But even you know, that's too high. I think we should be even much lower. Well, and if you'll remember, one that we're looking at with, there were some other certain circumstances that changed why we did what we did um, or why we're looking at doing what we're wanting to do. Um, so that's where that particular project was really one of those case by case basis because there were a lot of other factors that played in with that one. Uh, so you, it's having that other category and being able to justify why you're taking those other considerations in. I hope that makes sense without trying to really delve into what it is. So we're looking like franchises and an average franchise is a decent one probably is around a half a mil. A small business person on us whatever they started up a clothing store is about a hundred. So I mean I'm I'm just picking numbers out here. So that's just for plumbing, infrastructures, and stuff like that for a small business guy, so it's about 100. Franchises could go anywhere from 250 to a half. And I feel like we're just, I don't know. Are you talking well, about the, the minimum to minimum qualify? Capital of, yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's too high. Too high. Yeah. And then when I go to the minimum number of primary jobs, I think, first, I don't know if that number, I feel like the number's way off. And second, I think that number, it's, it would be irrelevant because small business owners, there's just one or two or three people there. Right. And we're trying to attract more people. So are you looking at embedding this information back into the document, Tracy, or is it going to be, is this going to sit out there kind of as a separate guideline section or? No, it's going to be when this is done, it is going to be embedded within the document. Um, kind of how you see on page 14 that table okay it's that table is essentially going to be made into an extension of that with what we just discussed with the ranking system roi and all those numbers i never heard of rent assistance oh yeah so in that in taylor we did that in the downtown area because we wanted to revitalize the downtown. So one of the things that we did was come up with a rental assistance program that brought people in and yeah. you essentially got a portion of your rent paid for for a year. And we did it, like at the, the first month you got 100% paid for, the second month 75 and it gradually went down so that by the end of the year, <coughs> you're expected to take on the full cost again, but it gives them the first year to come in and get established. That's great. And That's it great. worked out very yeah. well there. I just think the number of things to embed out of this first section is going to be minimal, if, if any. I mean, I'm, I'm interested on the return and investment and the payback period. That's huge. That's big. <coughs> but as far as setting some strict minimums, that's where I get a little queasy. And I wonder if it really makes sense to have them in there if they meet other guidelines. You know, if somebody's spending an awful lot of sales tax with two jobs or whatever, or, you know, not a huge investment. We take that into consideration as well. Right. Well, if you will, I'm not asking you to read through this, um, just asking for my ultimate drop dead goal date is to have this actually exactly prepared for 4B on Tuesday night. And then when we meet again, which we'll talk about in a little bit, we'll actually have to move our June meeting. But when we meet in June, then I will have this ready for 4B. 4B will probably just see it that night. But then in June, have y'all all adopt it. Um, and I will send it to you after I get it for 4B. I will send it out to all of y'all so you have time to review it ask questions, add anything, make changes, whatever, prior to our June meeting so that we can adopt this in June. Yeah, yeah so yeah, okay. please everyone, you can even start God, looking at it now. <clears throat> um, but I don't it. want to burden you with going through it right now yeah, because right. this yeah. document is gonna change. That's right, I understand. Good starting place and yeah, we should all look at it and 
you so essentially this changes. I don't really I'm okay. I'm asking if we can table it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Fine with everybody? Yes. Okay. All right. So now I'm am I on item number seven? Yes, ma'am. Discuss and consider economic development director update. Terry, do you want to say what happened at the Sunnyville Day at the Capitol? If I forget anything, sure. You're not. <laughs> uh, we actually had great attendance this year. So we've been doing this for a while, and typically we would have maybe a dozen people go. And we had 35 people, approximately. Um, I think it went very well. Um, we lucked out that it wasn't a busy day at the Capitol, so we were able to pretty much stay on our timeline. Um, we got recognized in the House, um, but our resolution didn't get read. There was a mix-up um, at the Capitol, and I don't think it was with Retta Bowers, our state rep <clears throat> staff. It was other folks that have to put this on the agenda to be read. We still got recognized. They just didn't read the resolution. Um, got the resolution read in the Senate uh, by Senator Hall and got recognized there. In between that, we took a group picture on the staircase. Um, I haven't seen those pictures yet, but typically, um, we will, they will send enough so that every attendee can have a photo. Um, we, let's see, we broke for lunch and we ended up just walking out across the street because sometimes the Capitol Grill can be <clears> a zoo, at, <laughs> trying to get everybody together and we had a pretty large group. Um, so um, my company, we have some lobbyists that house down there, so we reserved the basement conference room in the building where they're at. And we had a guy from the Texas Ranger law enforcement come in and talk. And he did a real informal presentation. Um, he didn't, you know, in the past we've had them do a PowerPoint and all that, but his was real informal. I really liked it because we got a lot of opportunity to interact with him and ask questions. And I think everybody liked that part. Had a great lunch. Um, Tracy ordered the lunch through one of the caterers that was suggested. Um, and we went back to the Capitol. <clears throat> We ended up having some free time, which was good, so people could kind of walk around and visit with any of their elected officials they wanted to and go to the Capitol store. And then that afternoon, we, was it just the one speaker, the economic development? Is that yeah, all we had? The, we canceled the one due to hearing TML the speaker had to cancel, yes, because of a particular bill that was being discussed in the House that day that TML is well involved in. That's the Texas Municipal League that helps out all the cities. And so they were going to talk to us a little bit about what they do, and they had to cancel because of that bill being worked on in the House that day. Um, then we got on the bus and headed back. We stopped in West at one of the check stop places on the way back so we could bring goodies back home. And I think we got back here about seven. I think the economic development discussion was real interesting. <clears throat> talk to the people at the state level that assist with that kind of stuff and they were giving their feedback on things and kind of projects they're seeing and how they handle requests coming into the state, how they kind of dole those out and how important it is to be on their radar too, you know, mm -hmm. for if you're a town that can handle this, wants and can handle this kind of development, they like to know that. So uh, I thought that was interesting. Excuse me. Yeah, and so in the chamber helped with a little bit of the cost, so we provided breakfast and goodie snack bags on the bus, and then the EDC paid for the actual bus and lunch. So we um, prepared gift bags for our state rep and our senator and the governor. Very nice. We got hats from the ISD. We got Sunnyvale honey. Um, the chamber had these things we put in there. The EDC had pins, and they were nice gift bags. And we forgot them on the bus. <laughs> and of course, we couldn't get a hold of the bus driver, but we had a chamber breakfast on Tuesday, and we were able to present the one to Senator Hall's staffer at breakfast. And I feel in June we'll probably be able to get the other one presented to Retta Bauer's staff, and then maybe just mail the one to the governor. But uh, that's something else that we did too was little gift bags for those three people. Here. And these nice Sunnyvale bags that says, Where you shine? <coughs> I forget. It's a good long day. Yeah, it was a long day. It was a long day because we had to you could get here at 5.30 for breakfast and the bus pulled out at 6 a.m. <clears throat> and then Tracy and I were up much earlier. <laughs> we were here at 5 o'clock. Yeah, she was packing coolers and I was buying donuts. 
forget anything? Did you enjoy it? Because that's the I first did. time you went. <clears throat> I, um, those guys, those, the, the Congress people and the senators are so, they're in it, they're moving like crazy. I mean, you could tell they were just meetings and formal meetings on the floor or meeting with committee meetings. Committee yeah. meetings. I mean, they're just tearing through it. And it's hard to get their attention, but we talked to both of them while we were there. Didn't get to spend a lot of time. But I thought that was interesting. I hadn't seen the floor in action before, so that was the first time I had seen it. I'd toured the Capitol, but not not seen them in action. I thought that was kind of interesting. And, <clears throat> yeah, that was one of the things we had opportunity for, too. I mean, of course, we were recognized in each gallery, so we could see them kind of working on the floor. But after lunch, since we didn't have the TML speaker, some of the folks, I think including Susan, went into the House uh, Gallery and House Chambers and kind of listened to them negotiating on a bill. And so that was interesting, too. Nice. Um, next item is the Tuesday, March 21, 2019. I'm assuming all of you know I'm hiring somebody, <laughs> but um, so I needed help for a little while now. I was looking for an intern. Um, Susan said, you have it in your budget. Why don't you just hire somebody? Um, I'm like, oh, gee, I never thought of that. So um, we had, we posted the job, we had 18 applicants, and we have it narrowed down to four applicants and we're interviewing tomorrow and Friday, and then hopefully can start them either at the end of this month or the first week of June. So um, still kind of working out logistics on desk. You'll see some office expenses. We'll have to get a computer. We're trying to locate to see if there's another desk. If not, you'll see another expense that we have to get a desk somewhere for them to sit. Um, then, that's pretty much it. The most they can work is 19.3 hours a week um, to stay with under the TML approved. If we go above that, then we have to pay uh, insurance. So we're keeping them in the part-time status. And then should things keep progressing like they do and maybe we need to move this person to full-time, that could be an option at a later time. Um, but I'm just looking forward to getting some yeah, for some of you that don't know, there's been some EDC directors that had a full-time assistant. So, um, I think up until my predecessor, and then there always was one. Yeah, she opted um, to just kind of wait and see, and then I knew that coming in, it's like, well, I don't know what it's like here yet, so I'll just wait and see. But two years in, I'm now we're past wait and see we're like get it now <laughs> so we are very um, busy much needed so hopefully you'll see um a new face that's kind of got flexible hours in there to where it doesn't like i'm not real keen they have to work from this time to this time as long as they're showing up getting things done um and then knowing that it's possible that they may have to come to a an evening meeting or something and just kind of flex that during the day um or during the week so keep track on that but hopefully you'll meet a new face here pretty soon. So is there any kind of like duties you foresee them doing like I think you said minutes I mean is there minutes filing that's where yeah really I was gonna say because that's I right now. I need an assistant for filing. <laughs> I've got um, essentially three or four boxes in my office that have just when I moved from one office to another they were just kind of stacked and so I never never been able to go through all the files and see what was there and be able to organize them so that's essentially the number one yeah. priority right now and then being able to do little things like you might actually get your logo attire stuff now um, you know, I better still get one for a year. <laughs> um, she's gonna wait so till I leave doing little things like Save that save money <laughs> good EDC <laughs> So having them really help out with some of those things that you know somebody could easily knock out if they had 10 minutes. It just sounds like such a minute amount of time, but at the end of the day, that's such a long period of time. Oh, and filing can just get caught up on you because that's one of the things I guess I don't like to do, and so I have a bunch of it. <laughs> so that's it. I will keep you posted whenever we make an offer to somebody. And Great. Okay. So then we'll move on to item number eight, discuss and consider future events and agenda items. Our upcoming regular, our upcoming town council meetings are May 13th and May 27th. 
However, May 27th has gotten canceled due to that being Memorial Day. So I think they're looking at having a meeting on the 28th. Um, the retail ICSC conference is May 18th through the 22nd. Gearing up for that, I've already got appointments set with several retail tenant representatives and um, other people over at the conference. So I'm looking forward to kind of following through with those conversations. Where's, where's that at? It's in Vegas this yep. year. Is it still in Vegas? This yeah. year? But you know, it's just kind of so you know, it's because th there is a lot. It's a four day conference and you can spend probably eight days there. I mean, it's huge. So um, give me a kind of perspective. When I first started going, which was 12 years ago, um, it was 500,000 square feet of retailers. Going now, today, it's over 2 million square feet of conference space that's retailers, brokers, um, I mean, you name it, they're there. So um, I'm looking forward to it. And But one, I've never said that, and I don't know if anybody remembers, but I've said this is a conference that Sunnyvale is probably not poised to go to. Um, I think the TDC, ICSC is sufficient. However, this year they changed the way that Texas is doing their ICSC conference. And it used to be just Texas. Now they've added Oklahoma, Louisiana, um, Arkansas, and Texas all under one umbrella. And the retailers that were there were all your national chains. And not that that's bad, we'd love to attract those, but kind of Sunnyvale's looked for that more unique regional draw and it wasn't fitting for the Texas conference for what we're actually looking for. So then you kind of look a little past that, Forney's going, Fault Springs is going, Mesquite's going, Terrell's going, all the, our competitors are going. So if they're there marketing themselves and they're right around us, if we don't get out there and start marketing it to these people, then we're not gonna, I mean, we're just still gonna fall flat. So. That is the only reason that I was like, well, we just really need to attend this one and see how it goes. If nothing happens and we don't go anywhere, then, you know, lesson learned. But it's worth getting out there. And yeah, especially with everybody stuff. else going, like you said, everybody else around us. So. Um, then our next board meeting is June 12th. However, that's the TDC Mid-Year Conference, and that was going to be here in Rockwall this year. Um, so it was going to see if everybody would be available June 5th, the week before, because the week after on June 19th, if you'll remember that is our joint meeting with council for an ED 101 board training. So essentially you'll have two meetings. I didn't have the 19th down, was I not gonna do that? I have had it on this to remind you for the last several months. I know, but- Add it to your calendar. I know, but it's, you can, but I didn't think because I've taken a four day EDC class, is that why? I mean, mm -hmm. did you expect everyone, all of us to come to this? For the ED board training, yes, absolutely, because that's going to try to get, I know you're rolling off the board and all that stuff, so I mean, if you want to pass out, but it would be nice if you. Okay. Um, pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't literally pass out. But. I can do June 5th, it looks like. That would make them so that they're not a week apart either. They still be a week in between them. All right. What's the other train? There's another train. 15th. May 31st. 30, I think it's oh, the, so uh, the Open, open Meetings Act training. Yeah. That is. That's the one I was thinking of that I'm not going to. Um, so that one, you're all required when you become a new board member to go and take the video, the hour-long video, and be able to get your certificates. Yeah. Well, this is taking that and it's on steroids. So it's a lot more in-depth information on rules and regulations, you know, talking more about walking quorums and how that works and what not to do, the ins and outs. And so you'll get a lot more detail within this one than you did within that hour training video. Um, if you can't let me know today, just whenever you can about the June meeting. And then again, if you haven't, like Terry did not, mark your calendar for June 19th, 6 to 9. Yeah, I, I think I was thinking of the May 31st one, so I, I'll put that on there. And so then also on June 5th will be the next Sunnyvale Chamber quarterly luncheon. 
and we're going to have a mid-year town update. So if you can attend that luncheon, we're going to have Susan talk, probably the mayor and Tracy, and we'll just do a, a mid-year update at that June 5th. It's from 11.30 to 1 here at Town Hall. Yes, better get going. <laughs> I've got some of it together already. And I think just, just kind of FYI while I'm talking about the chamber, I think we're, our goal for um, our September luncheon is to have our state rep come in and give us a legislative update from the session. So that should be a good one too for September. So okay. unless there's any other agenda items y'all would like to discuss further um, next time. Um, from the joint meeting, so I guess the, the downtown committee is just going to meet again. I'm trying to think of where we kind of left that off. So where that got left off was for the downtown committee to work with the interested party and um, just see where that goes. Okay. and then keep. So we won't be having another like <clears throat> committee meeting or we will eventually with some stakeholders possibly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, looking at dates for that, the Glacier got um, Glacier Committee got set up to move that forward. Um, Glacier's meeting to kind of with the consultant. The Glacier Committee is going to look through all the public participation information that was received and take some of the citizen input and see how we can incorporate into that into the plans um, for before they put there. So hopefully we'll have a preliminary master plan. Um, within the next couple of months to be a council. And then rails to trails, um, we just got officially accepted to move on to the next phase um, for grant funding. So we are, yeah, we're having to do a conference call um, to review and then put together a more detailed package application for the next go round. And then we're in the process of putting together a an offer letter and meeting with the yeah and I think um, I talked to several of you that uh, and you probably got feedback I think most everybody thought that that joint meeting was probably one of the best ones we had yeah, yes yeah <laughs> it was it wasn't too long mm -hmm. Saji made the call on that and I'm glad <laughs> okay we, we got to the point yeah it was good <laughs> got a lot accomplished you know, yes we did so. All right, so now we are going to recess into executive session pursuant to Chapter 551, Chapter D of the Texas Governmental Code at 626 p.m. to discuss Project Pig, Project PC, Project Tenant, and Project Landscape.